An RODI, or reverse osmosis, deionization system is a combination of four distinct filter types that combine together to produce ultra-pure water, most commonly referred to as zero TDS water, or water with zero dissolved solids, and measured with a TDS meter. I'm going to explain the four filter types in order of importance. The first is the main filter, the reverse osmosis membrane in the white canister up top. The rule of thumb is to use a single 75 gallon per day DuPont Film Tech, formerly Dow, membrane. That's because 75 gallons per day is enough for most reefers' needs. Under ideal conditions, the DuPont 75 gallon per day has the highest rejection rates, up to 99%. But there are faster membranes of 100 and 150 gallons per day, and dual membrane options, which double the output and effectively cut the wastewater in half. Understanding how these work will make it much clearer which configuration is right for you. In optimal conditions, the various membranes alone, without the pre-filters, can remove 96 to 99% of the TDS or dissolved solids in the water. I mean, if your home has 100 TDS, the water in the membrane will drop into just 1 to 4 TDS. The oil membrane performs a vast majority of the work and typically has a very long lifespan of 3 years. However, the membrane alone performs poorly with a short lifespan without the sediment and carbon pre-filters, and basically you'd never see a membrane used alone. Why they're configured as a complete RODI system with pre-filters will become apparent in just a moment. In reefing, we want the highest RO membrane rejection rates possible, 99% being ideal because what makes it through the membrane will need to be removed by the DI resin, something we'll also get to a bit later. Depending on the membrane selected and how the system is run, 96 to 99% TDS removal is typical. Where you fall in that range is primarily influenced by the membrane selected and operating to spec. Outside of the membrane itself, water pressure is that spec I'm talking about and the most important driver of RO performance, both water quality and speed of production. Most of the popular DuPont Film Tech 75 and 100 gallon per day membranes require a home water pressure of 50 PSI to work properly. In my experience, most homes are in the 40 to 60 PSI range. These membranes are designed for typical home use with typical home pressures. Some of the faster 150 gallon per day membranes require 65 PSI for optimal performance and may require a booster pump. So why does pressure matter so much? The understanding of how thin film composite RO membranes work has evolved in recent years to essentially the RO membrane is a cylindrical filter that if you unrolled it, you can see is really a sheet membrane filter called a thin film composite membrane. The thin membrane has pores so small that they predominantly only let small water molecules through and leaves larger contaminant molecules behind to be flushed out with the wastewater. Your home's pressure essentially squeezes the water molecules through the small membrane pores to produce purified water. The higher the pressure, the more that it will squeeze through. Higher pressure increasing rejection and performance as well. To demonstrate the fact, we ran a 75 gallon per day membrane at a variety of pressures as low as 10 psi to 90 psi and monitor both rejection rates as well as flow rates and how much water they produced in a single day. You can see here at 10 psi, the rejection rate was as low as 87%. The water still contains 13% of the contaminants, but even by 30 psi, it jumps up to 96%, and by 50 psi, we hit 98%. And by 70 psi, we hit 98.5% of the contaminants rejected. Just for reference point, a jump from 1 TDS to 2 TDS will double the DI resin consumption, something that we'll explore further in a moment as well. However, something just as important to many of you is flow rate. 75 gallons a day is pretty slow, just 3 gallons an hour, so speed may matter. Maybe not every day, but certainly you'll run into a day where you need it as fast as possible. 10 psi, the system only produces 9 gallons a day. That's like six cups an hour. By the time we hit 30 PSI, we're at 37 gallons a day, or half the 75 gallons it's rated for. At 50 PSI, we're hitting very close to the desired rate of 69 gallons a day. At 70 PSI, 96 gallons a day, and at 90 PSI, we're doing 120 gallons a day, or approaching double what the membrane's rated for. You can see how more pressure essentially squeezes more water molecules through the membrane and produces water faster. One thing that's valuable to consider is faster membranes or water production might not be better unless faster is important to you. 75 gallon per day DuPont Film Tech is a sweet spot of production and rejection rate performance, but what about the 100 and 150 gallon per day options? The DuPont 100 will give you an extra gallon an hour, 25 gallons a day, but the rejection rate typically drops a percentage point, which will increase DI resin cost to remove what it misses. If your water is fairly clean, this might be an extra DI resin change a year. If your water is very high in TDS, it could be three or four more cartridge swaps a year, or 15 to 60 bucks a year. Just evaluate that against the value of the extra speed. The 150 membranes are a bigger challenge. Yes, you doubled the speed, and that may be important, specifically if you have a bigger system. 
However, the best rejection rates are often hard to achieve unless you run in ideal conditions. Many RO systems with 150 gallon per day membranes will likely consume more DI resin. They also require 65 PSI to work properly, which is above most home typical pressures, meaning you'll need a booster pump, which can add 100 to $200 to the cost of operating the system. This is fine as long as you're aware of the trade-offs going into what's getting that extra speed of water production. However, there's a different method of increasing flow rates without impacting rejection in that way, and they have the benefit of effectively cutting the wastewater produced in half as well, saving on water bills. It's two membranes run in series on a single system. We refer to this as the water saver configuration of membranes and my own preferred method of increasing flow rates. What this does is take the wastewater from the first membrane and feed it into the second membrane. We'll demonstrate how the water saver dual membrane configuration works with our water here at BRS. When we performed this test, our city water was 95 TDS of the tap. After passing through the first RO, the product water dropped to just 2.16 TDS and relatively pure at the flow rate of 72 gallons a day. The wastewater is also referred to as the concentrate because when we squeeze that pure water through the membrane, it concentrated the TDS in the wastewater to 126 TDS. At this point, that 126 TDS water would normally go down the drain. But in this case, with the dual water saver configuration, we feed that wastewater into the second membrane. Where it goes in 126 TDS, the product water is mixed with the product water from the first membrane to produce a combined 2.43 TDS at 138 gallons a day. The difference between 2.16 TDS in a single membrane and 2.42 TDS in a dual is immaterial and even not measurable on a typical TDS meter. Reduced wastewater, double the flow rates and immaterial increase in TDS is obviously desirable for most. It's the way I run all my systems. However, there are two reasons why we don't recommend them to everyone. One, they add to the cost of the initial unit or with the added on upgrade kit. Nearly any system can be reconfigured after the fact with a kit like this. The other consideration is if you already have really dirty water, like 500 TDS, that might already reduce the lifespan of the membrane to some degree, and to a lesser degree, you'll use a little bit more DI resin to get that residual TDS. However, there is a hidden win in all this that may balance that. Your pre-filters or sediment filters and carbon blocks are effectively working half as hard in the water saver configuration. The dual membranes in series, we don't significantly increase the water going through that sediment filter or carbon block, but we double the product water produced we get from that system. That means the pre-filters will have approaching double the usable life, close to 80% longer for the same amount of water produced, less environmental waste, and the upgrade has the potential to pay for itself within a couple of filter change. When considering the right flow rate for your tank, consider these two things. One, when do I want to turn the system on for my water change this weekend? A 75 gallon per day unit is about three gallons an hour. 150 gallon per day is about six gallons an hour. But remember that flow rate is also tied to pressure and a booster pump in our test showed you could boost the pressure and get as much as 200 or more gallons per hour from the same dual 75 gallon per day membranes and even better rejection rates and lower DI resin consumption. That said, believe it or not, the next most impactful filter on the RODI system is the cheapest. It's a sediment filter and it can be tuned to your system as well.